In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create your own shared library and then use it in your own test code. Now, creating and using shared libraries is important because more often than not, when you're working on larger projects, you'll either be creating or using someone else's shared libraries. And this allows a lot of people to create various different uh, components and functions and distribute that across the team. So to get started, let's make a few directories on the command line. To do that, we're going to make dir code where we'll store our shared library CPP files, IDE, which will store our eclipse.project and .c project, inc, which will store our shared library's API, or the header file, and then test, which will, which will be where we include our main function for testing this. So we have code, inc, IDE, and test. Now jumping into Eclipse, let's create a new C++ project. Now I like to put my .project and .c project files in a different area. Here I have shared lib, which, is, which will be my component, and then the IDE folder that we just created. So let's add a new folder, shared lib, and we'll put our files in there. We'll use the Linux GCC toolchain. We're going to call our project shared lib. Okay. Now, we see here on the command line, this IDE, we now have a new directory. Now, if we go into that directory, IDE shared lib, we see that we have a .c project and .project file. And that's where Eclipse stores project-specific settings. And that'll be important to remember later on. So now let's add a folder. We're going to add a folder to include our source code in. And let's go to Advanced. In this Advanced menu, we're going to link to an alternate location. Now let's browse for that folder. In this case, I'll jump into the IDE and back one. And let's go to our ink directory. Now we can finish, and let's add one more folder. Again, we go to advanced, and in the, in the advanced menu, we go to link to alternate location. Let's browse for that, and then go to code. Now we finish, and what we have here is a link from our project into those ink and code directories we created earlier. Now let's configure some settings for our shared library. Right click on the project and go to properties. In the properties menu, click the resource drop down button and go to linked resources. Under here, you'll see linked resources tab and absolute path location. We're going to convert these to relative paths. Yes. Now that we've done that, let's tell our shared library where things are. So if we go to General, Paths and Symbols. Now under this Includes tab, have GNU C++ selected, and over to the right, we'll add an Include directory. And what we're doing is we're telling the project where we're going to include the uh, header file. So let's go to variables, and we're going to search proj, and select proj dir path, project directory path. Okay? That'll be where our .c project and .project files are, and I'll show you that on the command line here in a minute. So if our .c project and .project files are under the IDE folder, we need to go back one, and remember we created a directory put them in, so we have to go back one more to take us to the top level of the component. Then we're going to go over to ink, and that's where we're going to put our header file. So let's tell it where to look, and then we're good. Now a few more things before we start building. Let's go to our C, C++ build, click the drop down menu. Go to settings, and in our settings we need to tell 
under the GC, GCC C++ compiler, go to miscellaneous, and flag position independent code. And then lastly, we're going to tell it, instead of building an executable, we're going to build a shared library. With this shared library, you can spe specify an extension and a prefix. Now, this will put us down another directory, so we need to give it a relative path to where we want to put it. And in this case, let's say I want to create a live directory so I know where my live file can be found. Now that I've done that, let's go dot dot slash, dot dot slash, and one more time dot dot slash. Tell it to go to our live directory and then prefix it with live. Now that we've done that, we should be good to go. So hit apply, OK. And now let's create our, our header file. Let's call it sharedlib.h. And with that, let's do the standard pound if not defined. going to define our API. So we're going to create a class called shared lib. And for our public interface, let's create a constructor. And for this example, we'll just do a basic default constructor. Similarly with the destructor. And let's create a, an extra method just because. Now that we have that, let's go and we'll add a file to our code directory. We include our header file, and let's fill in some of the blanks. Eclipse will take a minute to figure out where that header file is, so don't, you can ignore these errors for now. Now let's have this print something out to the console. done that, let's compile our program. Now, let's look at where we've set everything up. Under our code directory, it's where we put our shared lib.cpp. Under our ink directory is where we put our API or our header file. And then under our lib directory, we now have our shared live shared lib.so. So the next step we want to do is put some code in our test directory so we can test our program. So let's create a new project. And let's call this test shared. create a new folder, oops, create a new folder, there we go, now we'll convert
events it. And again, we're going to use the Linux GCC tool chain. Okay, we'll do a s similar steps as before. Let's create a new folder. Advanced. Link to an alternate location. We're going to go over to our test directory and hit OK. Now once again, go to our properties, resource, linked resources, and we're going to convert that to a relative path. Now here, we need to tell it where to find the API we have previously. So let's go to paths and symbols, and under our includes tab, GNU C++, let's add another include path. Again, variables, search proj, P-R-O-J, let's pick that, and then, like we did earlier, we'll have to make it relative to that .c project and .project area. So up two directories and over to include. We can hit OK. And then now we're going to use an external library. So go to our library paths, add. Similarly, Go to variables. We're going to search for proj dir path again, P-R-O-J. Double click. Again, we'll make it relative to that prod dot project and dot C project area. We're going to tell it to go to our lib directory. Under our lib directory, we have this guy floating around. So let's tell it what we want to pick up, shared lib. And the nice thing about this is that it'll automatically include the lib and .so at the end. OK. And finally, let's go ahead and put our uh, .project or our executable in a more convenient path. So we'll put it at the top of our working directory. Now, let's add our main.cpp. was shared lib. Let's do lib dot, what was our method call? Say hello. Now that we have that, let's compile our program. successfully linked in with our shared lib and if I click on this guy and hit F3 on my keyboard it'll take me right over there. Similarly you hit control and click it'll take me back to that shared line. So now that we have it linked into our main.cpp let's see if we can run it. In our current working directory we now see our executable we just built. One more thing that we have to do is tell it where we need to bring in the library. So we need to set ld library path equals to where we are currently into the lib directory. Now that we've done that, export ld, LD library path. We can now run test shared live. And what you see here is our hello from main that we wrote right here. And also, in our say hello method, we see a nice hello. And so that's how you can create and use a shared library.